Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. My guest this week is Dr. Dan Grove. Dan is the wildlife veterinarian with the Game and Fish Department. We're going to talk about several diseases in our state's deer herd that have popped up the past several years. Dan, let's start with EHD. Uh, what is EHD and where have we had outbreaks before in North Dakota? EHD is uh, short for epizootic hemorrhagic disease, Thank meaning you. that it occasionally <laughs> pops up. Um, there's two viruses that can cause it. There's uh, actually an EHD virus, and then there's also what's called blue tongue virus. Um, so it, people use the names interchangeably, but uh, um, it's actually two, two separate viruses, but deer can get both. Uh, historically, it's been south and west of the Missouri River. Uh, in recent outbreaks since about 2009, we've actually seen an expansion uh, east of the river and north of the river. Um, we've actually, in 2006, had cases as far east as Grand Forks County. So um, it's just uh, basically anywhere the midge lives that can spread the virus, uh, there's potential that the disease can exist. That's what causes the disease, these midges? Well, the midge spreads the virus. The virus can live in deer, it can live in uh, cattle also. Um, anything that can harbor the virus, the midge can then spread it from one sick animal to another. All right. How are we doing this year? We haven't had cases yet? As of yet, we have not received any, uh, any notifications that there's been dead deer anywhere. Is there uh, a chance this late in the season that we could? Th is there, we've had a couple of good hard frosts, and so there's always that potential that not all the midge have been killed off. Uh, it's not as likely uh, once we have even more frost for it to occur. Usually the first couple of good frosts kill off the midge and then the cycle stops for the year. If uh, a deer is acting strangely, people maybe have uh, suspicions that it may be diseased with EHD. Do they have to fear harvesting these deer? Uh, well, we don't recommend uh, harvesting any animal that's acting sick, but if it is actually EHD, it doesn't uh, infect people at all, so the animal would still be good to harvest. Uh, but in general, if it's acting neurologic or any other signs of disease, we don't recommend harvesting it. We recommend reporting it to us so we're aware of it. Um, but in general, if you, if you harvested an animal that was, acting, that was acting normal and it happened to have the disease, it wouldn't be a concern at all. Uh, let's move on to the other disease now that we've been monitoring for the past several years, Dan. Uh, we went for years in North Dakota without a single case of chronic wasting disease. We do have it in the state now. Yes. Yes, we've had uh, seven positive animals, uh, six mule deer and one white-tailed deer out of deer hunting unit 3F2, which is south and west of the river, uh, kind of in the central portion of the state. Is that something that's kind of geographic specific? Uh, yeah, the disease basically is, uh, is spread through direct contact or movement of infectious materials uh, out of the area, uh, which is why we actually have restrictions in place with carcass movements and things like that. Uh, but right now we have only found uh, CWD within the hunt deer hunting unit 3F2. You and your crews have been extremely diligent in monitoring the uh, disease, CWD. Uh, in fact, you've been very mobile and there are specific units or specific areas uh, that you've been monitoring. You move them every year. Where are you at this year? This year we're in the western third of the state, so basically it would be the units that uh, are west, south and west of the Missouri River. and. Uh, west of 83 as you go north. We're again going to be sampling in 3F2. We sample that every year, but it just so happens this year it's in our core sampling area. Right. What do you do to monitor and sample? We collect uh, hunter harvested heads as well as uh, look at roadkill deer or any other sick acting deer. We take lymph nodes uh, from those animals and we submit them for testing. If I hunt in the eastern part of the state and I want to voluntarily uh, help you out with the surveillance? How do I go about doing that? Uh, if you're not in the target area, uh, we, all, we will still sample your animal. The reason we rotate through is just uh, funding basically in terms of the amount of money that we have. We, we do one third of the state each year. Uh, but if you want to have your animal tested, uh, you can take it to uh, one of the local game and fish offices in your region. There are quite a few hunters from North Dakota that venture out of state to hunt big game. Uh, and there are specific regulations that they need to be aware of when they come back, correct? Yes. Uh, there is a CWD proclamation which is signed by the governor each year. Uh, basically, if you're hunting in an area that is known to have CWD, 
you're going to have certain restrictions put on you and you need to re review the proc before you go is the easiest way to figure out if the area you're hunting in is listed in our proclamation or not. Uh, you can't bring back in um, whole carcass. It has to be boned out meat only. Uh, you have to have basically the no spinal, spinal tissue whatsoever or brain matter whatsoever left in the, in the skull. Where can they find that proclamation? The proclamation is available on our website. So right, I would assume that the website would answer pretty much any question that people have or who can they contact. Uh, they can contact the general information number uh, for the Game and Fish Office or uh, the uh, general inf info email can also be used. All right, Dan, thanks. Thank you. Here is a map of the hunting units where CWD surveillance will take place this deer season. And here is a list of the processors, taxidermists, and stores where you can drop off your deer head to have it tested. You can also drop your head off at all game and fish offices. There are special regulations if you harvest a deer in hunting unit 3F2, where several cases of chronic wasting disease have already been found. Make sure you read the proclamation and understand the rules for transporting deer out of that unit. For Dr. Dan Grove and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.